Sorry for the delay, I wanted to record this video days ago, but then the second Moderna shot sort of... It really knocked me out with the side effects and my brain is still a bit melty, so we'll see how well I get through this. Have you ever wanted to complain about something but then didn't because you thought it might be perceived as rude? You might have even very genuinely believed that whatever you wanted to complain about was a seriously messed up state of affairs. But you didn't say anything because you knew that if you did it, you wouldn't be really seen as particularly nice. After all, I mean, sure, your boss is your boss, but they're also, like, they're very nice to you. They're a friendly character. They work hard in the company themselves and they, they socialize with you. They don't call you names. It, sure, when you mess up sometimes, your boss gets angry, but, but not as angry as they could get and there's no, like, extreme repercussions from it for you. So you work the extra hours, excuse the fact that you didn't get paid for, like, half of them as a clerical error, which you then consequently proceed to ignore and forget about forever very deliberately. You don't take the vacation time that's in your contract because that would mean leaving everyone else in this bad situation. Most of all, your boss who is so nice. Maybe eventually, if you have any faith at all that things might change, you, you know, you notice that they don't and you very gently have a strategy with which you go and suggest that potentially, maybe hypothetically, it could be that something is very slightly amiss. This is then, of course, acknowledged with a nod and a smile because, you know, you're taken seriously. Your input is value. Of course, you know, nothing changes again. Time goes on, your irritation grows. Very slowly, very slowly, but it does. So you go to complain again, just as gently as before, and your boss rolls their eyes. They're a little bit irritated that you would dare to come in here and imply that they have forgotten about this or that they don't care about you and your complaints because they totally haven't forgotten and they totally do care. Eventually, you might get to a point where you have had it. You get to a point where you are very, very angry and you attempt to express this in a manner that is commensurate with just how angry you are. Because, you know, the seriously fucked up shit has been going on for quite some time now. What's gotten into you? Why do you think it's uh, appropriate to raise your voice in this situation? Or use this kind of language that you're using? I've always been so nice to you. This company has done so much for you just by giving you this opportunity that you have. And you couldn't have found a less rude and disgusting way to say these things about me? And now suddenly you're the bad guy. What you're saying is inherently not valid because you're just throwing a tantrum. You're being immature. But think about what actually happened here, right? You've been subjected to unacceptable conditions by someone who has power over you. You have expressed your misgivings about this and have been ignored. But now that you have expressed yourself with the appropriate amount of force that is commensurate with the situation you are in, you you are being painted as the villain. All because you are being rude to someone you have every right to be rude against because they have been a lot more rude to you in actual, real, tangible ways. You ever been hit with the classic there is no reason to swear? It's really funny how that one is basically used exclusively in situations where that's the exact kind of time and place that swearing was invented for to express your emotions? And you may see this as a social inconvenience, uh, in, an unfortunate quirk in human nature. I'm here to tell you that actually, politeness is an insidious mechanism designed to solidify the hierarchies of power. The unwritten rules of proper decorum serve pretty much exclusively to hide the underlying power structures that you are being taught do not actually exist. And while this happens in all areas of life, nowhere is it more apparent than today's business world. 
Especially in the last decade, a massive amount of emphasis has been placed on this positivity culture in the corporate world. You know what I'm talking about, it's the whole, oh, we're a team and we're all friends and we have beanbag chairs and there's a mini fridge with sparkling water and orange juice. We're a huge warehouse full of books, dildos and packets of ground almonds, but we have this box right here where there's nice music playing. So whenever one of our workers has a panic attack in our labyrinthian complex of doom, they can sit in there for 10 minutes and then be reprimanded. Every day articles come out by rich executives wondering how they can make their employees care about the company so much that they will make it the most important thing in their existence. Structure everything in their life around it exclusively at all times and really make it the core aspect of their identity. And the reason for this is simple, they want to take away the very last bit of control you have over yourself. Your thoughts. Think about this, right? Think about the old trope of the big 90s cubicle office, like these huge expanses of cubicles. And you sit in there just doing the work, just getting by so you can go home and do whatever people were doing in the 90s. And your boss comes by with this huge stack of papers drops it on your desk with a shit-eating grin, goes to the corner office to do cocaine. You hate your job. And while you're not going to go ahead and call your boss a cunt to his face, you're also not going to be particularly secretive about the fact that you hate your job. And why wouldn't you? You're being exploited, underpaid, overworked by people whose sole goal is to squeeze as much out of you as possible while giving as little as possible in return. Hating your job, as ineffectual as you think it may be, is still an important form of rebellion. It's you saying, look, I'm an adult, I have to participate in society society in order to exist, but boy oh boy do I fucking hate it, and given the opportunity to change these conditions of mine, I absolutely would. It's easy to rebel against the fat cat railway baron. It's not as easy to rebel against someone who pretends to be your friend, because the labor conditions, by and large, are still shit. In some areas, they're worse. Wages haven't been growing, prices have been going up, people work more hours for less money. Wages are being stolen, wealth inequality is at levels that have been achieved at very, very, very few times throughout history. And employers are using every dirty trick in the book to make life difficult for you. And this is a book that's been way expanded through modern technology. But it's okay because they're doing all this with a smile on their face. Here's the black-pilled truth. Politeness is fundamentally a lie. When you are being nice to someone that you like and that you want to be nice to, you don't have to be polite. You can just be yourself toward that person. The lie here is, of course, that you live in a system that is soul-crushingly oppressive and exploitative of you and everyone around you, and you have to pretend like this is fine and actually you enjoy it. That is the lie that we have to tell to everyone and ourselves as well. We're not allowed to rebel even in the privacy of our own thoughts. We have to pretend like being exploited is something that we should should be grateful for. Why do you think so many ads these days take so much care to show happy workers? Especially in industries and specific corporations where we know the labor conditions are so horrible that people commit suicide to escape them. All these companies spend unfathomable sums to cultivate an image of positivity and niceness. But in truth, it is a means of control. It's a social stagnant designed to ensure that not even the people that are directly oppressed by you express their misgivings about that oppression to each other. Because talking shit about your boss is gossiping, and gossiping about your friends is bad. 
And you never know who might tattle on you for this. Factually, what we see here is the notion that it is a societal ill to offend those of a higher social station than yourself. It is impolite to question the social order. And politeness is such an integrally important quality to have. And if you think, well, my thoughts are my own, they can never take that away from me, think again. The reason humanity is the dominant species on this planet is because we have developed the ability to integrate into and navigate complex social systems. That is literally why we have civilization, and civilization is why we have pretty much everything that we have. Every time you feel the urge to rebel, even in the sense that you want to say something, you want to express your misgivings about any aspect of your life situation, and then you don't do it because you are afraid of the social repercussions of doing so, that connection in your brain gets a little stronger. And it's not like it's just at work that you can't express these things. They have access to your social media, they have surveillance, they have entire companies trawling the net for people who work within their corporation that have a problem with leadership. This is the only reason why your boss wants to be friends with you on Facebook. So you end up not doing anything because the connection of not doing anything in your brain as a neural pathway becomes stronger and stronger every time you fail to rebel against it. Because how would you rebel against it? Any sign of rebellion would immediately destroy your life. Until of course eventually you become the warden of your own prison. You become the agent of your own oppression. This is how cults and abusive relationships fall. We are primed to fall victim to this kind of shit. And though of course the rise of social media has given the people who wish to propagate such a social order unprecedented ability to do so, it's not the first time that we have seen something like this happen. The most prominent example that everyone can probably think about immediately is Victorian England. It was a horrifically oppressive and exploitative society where every form of rebellion was choked out in the cradle by the social norms of politeness and decorum. It was considered a social ill to offend those of a higher social station than yourself. It was impolite to question the social order, and politeness truly was such an important quality to have. This way, you can control even the middle management, even the lowest rung of the powerful. This way, no one is free. And hopefully now that I have pointed this out to you, you can see this shit everywhere. You definitely know people who work in an environment like this. Probably even you work in an environment like this. And I'm not saying your boss shouldn't be nice to you, although I am kind of saying it in the sense that I'm saying it's not a should. It's a must. Your boss treating you with basic human decency is not a bonus. It is not optional. It is not a replacement for actual compensation. And it is sure as shit not a reason to create bad labor conditions. It is the bare minimum of any social interaction and you are owed it. The important bit is that you recognize when it is being used as a weapon. And then not to accept any of that bullshit because it would be impolite to rebel against your own oppression. Thank you very much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share this to your relevant communities, but do not spam them. Consider supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar, buy some of my merchandise or my short story collection. And I know nobody watches this end portion of the video, so I feel fairly safe saying this because I hate asking people for shit. But if you can spare some money on Patreon, Please do, that will be pretty lit. Uh, I know there's a lot of good creators out there to support. Uh, and I also know, and all of those creators know, because I, you know, I talk to them also. You're, every, all of the creators that you like, we're friends. Uh, <laughs> everyone is seeing a massive break in, in their Patreon finances. And it's all, you see the exit surveys on Patreon and it's all 
my financial situation changed because of the whole COVID situation. So I look, I blame no one for canceling their Patreon or for losing a lot of money on Patreon. But if you do have the spare reserves, if you find yourself in the great and privileged position to be there, it would be pretty based if you could help me or any of your favorite creators out. And see you around, cunts.